Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to Bytes of Architecture. So in this series, we're going to be looking at computer architecture, but mainly from the perspective of programmers. Now, this first video of the series is going to be a companion piece to one of our recent videos in Bits of Architecture, where we talked about how we use compiler drivers to generate executables. And we talked about the different phases that these compiler drivers go through in terms of pre-processing and compilation, uh, assembly and linking, right? All of these different steps that are used to generate that final executable. Now, what we're going to be looking at today is how we can use a, a real world compiler, so GCC in this case, in order to run through each of these stages and see the intermediate output on the way to making an executable. So let's go ahead and get started. And the program that we're going to be uh, generating, generating an executable for today is everyone's favorite, it's going to be a Hello World program in C++. So at the very top here, we have our include of IO stream. Then we have our main function where we use std cout to print Hello World with a new line character before returning zero. So a very simple program here. Now, the main way that people are familiar with using something like GCC or G++ is just by doing something like G++, giving their input file and maybe providing an output file name. So something like, you know, hello. And this will go through all of these different phases for generating an executable. And here we have our hello dot our hello executable, right? That we can run and get a print of hello world. But what about the output of these other intermediate stages? So let's go ahead and see um, what those look like, right? So we'll start out with pre-processing. Now, in the previous video, we talked about how pre-processing was used to do things like expand macros and to find and paste the contents of these files that we were including. So things like IO stream in this case. So let's go ahead and run uh, G++ again, and we'll use the dash capital E flag to tell G++ to stop after the pre-processing phase. So we'll do that. We'll pass in our hello.cpp and we'll give an output name up to our pre-processed file, right? So hello.ii. And we can go ahead and open up this hello.ii. And we see that, it, you know, it looks very different than our original um, hello.cpp file, right? We have all of this code in this file that we didn't write. And then at the very bottom here, we have our four lines of code from our original hello.cpp, right? Our main function, our print, and then our return of zero and then closing curly bracket. So where is all this other code coming from? Well, all this other code is really just the code that's in that IO stream file. So our preprocessor just found that file and pasted the contents. That's really all an include does, right? It just find, it tells the preprocessor to find that file and paste the contents into whatever file is including it. So all of these hundreds or thousands of lines over here is just coming from that IO stream file. Okay, so let's go ahead and quit out of here and let's move on to the next step or phase in generate, generating an executable, which is going to be compilation, right? So we're translating from our, from our high level C++ into the assembly instructions of our processor. So something like x86. Now to tell G++ to stop after, um, or to you know, go through pre-processing and stop after compilation, we can just use G++ dash capital S, and then we can pass our file, uh, our input file. So we'll just do hello.cpp again, and then we can you know, give it an output name. So hello.s. So here we can open up this hello.s file, and we see that we suddenly have something very different uh, than C++, right? We're out of the land of C++ into the land of assembly. So we see a couple things that give us a bit of a point of reference. So, right, we have our hello.cpp, so this dot .file up here. We have these text sections, which are our code sections of our file. We also see we have these row data sections, which is our read-only data. So we see that our string hello world exists in one of these uh, read-only data sections. And then we also see things like functions, right? And we have something that's called main, right? And this looks suspiciously like our main function. Right, we have some instructions that we may not understand, so like a load effective address and a move and a push. But then we have things that look somewhat familiar, so something like a call, right? 
So we're calling something related to, you know, char traits, you know, basic O stream. And this looks suspiciously kind of like our print. And then we have, you know, a move of zero followed by a return, right? And this is really just our return zero. But you can see now that all of our, you know, code we've written in C++ has been distilled down into these primitive um, assembly level instructions, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and quit out of here. And the next phase we have during this you know, process of generate, generating an executable is going to be assembly, right? Where we take this, uh, this assembly code and translate it into machine code, right? The binary ones and zero that the processor actually understands, right? The encoding of our instructions. Now we can do that and tell our compiler to stop after uh, assembly by running G++ dash C on uh, hello.cpp. And we'll tell the output to be hello.o, right? And then we get this code um, that's sometimes called object code or these object files. Now, if we try to just directly open these files with our text editor, we see that they look rather ugly and incomprehensible, right? That's because they're just binary ones and zeros for the most part. So, you know, our, you know, text editor does, doesn't really know what to make of it, right? Because it's just these ones and zeros. It's not actual text. Now we can always disassemble, right? These, uh, this object code and even full executables. And we can do that with special tools. So things like object dump or obj dump. So we can say we want obj dump to disassemble our hello.o. And you can see that we get these instructions, right? Um, this output of our text section, which is um, our code section of our object code. And you can see we even have something like a main function here that looks you know, very similar to how it looked in that .s file, right? So we have some moves and load effective addresses. We have a call, and then eventually we have this move of zero followed by our return, right? So our print followed by our return of zero. And another fun thing is you can actually see the encoding of these different instructions. So that's what's being shown on the left-hand side here, right? This is the hex uh, encoding of these different instructions on the right. Okay, so the last thing that we have to do right now that we have this object code is this linking phase, right? So that's going to be the phase where our compiler driver um, invokes our linker to link together all of the different pieces to generate this final executable here, right? And that's what we get when we just run that G++, you know, hello.cpp, and we give it an output file name. So, you know, dash O, you know, hello. So our compiler will go through, it will run pre-processing, it will run compilation, it will run assembly, and then it will go through that, invoke the linker, right, LD, um, in this case, uh, to generate this final executable called hello, right? And we can run that again. We see we get hello world. But we can also invoke, right, our compiler from any of these intermediate stages, right? So we can get rid of this hello executable. And I can say invoke G++ starting from hello.ii. And I want to create an executable called hello. And you can see it does just that. And it works just fine. Likewise, I could do the exact same thing starting from, say, our assembly code, right, in this hello.s, right? So I could do g++ hello.s and give an output executable name just called hello, right? And we can go ahead and run this. And again, we just see our hello world. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and do it for this video, a basic overview of, you know, how modern compilers work and how we can see these different um, phases of compilation. I guess one final thing we could show is that you can actually tell GCC to dump all of these files at once. So we can get rid of hello, hello.ii, hello.o, and hello.s. And we can just run g++ hello.cpp, and we can just run it with save temps. And you can see it generates all of these other files, this ii, this o, and this s file. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick. And I hope you have a nice day.